Hey everybody, Ed Dana, the Ed Dana YouTube channel. I want to thank everybody for uh, who commented on the videos that I posted of our 4th of July celebration at Conneaut, Ohio in the park last night. We had a good time. There weren't a ton of people. It was the first night of the festival, festival but the festival was pretty big. Uh, Conneaut is actually the largest city in the state of Ohio acreage wise or you know square mile wise in the state of Ohio with the fewest people we also call it the sharpest point with the dullest people in Ohio but yeah that's just you know that was kid stuff when we were kids but yeah we had a great time uh, shout out to Marty who sets the festival up he did us right uh, I didn't get a shot of it. I didn't get a picture of it that I posted on Facebook of the elephant that was they had down there. I uh, I was really surprised to see that they had an elephant down there and you could get an elephant ride. Maybe Sunday, if I get a chance, I can get Linda out there to get up on that elephant and take a picture of her. That'd be kind of cool. But she didn't want to do it last night. Uh, but hey, thanks for the positive comments on the videos. I know through computer speakers, sometimes the mixes can sound kind of rough from the the Zoom uh, Q2 HD, but yeah, if you've got a little better speaker system, it sounds better. If you put on some headphones, it'll sound a little better. There's usually a little more bass in the mix for us than what we had last night. And I used that White Falcon guitar that I was talk that I sh did the video of yesterday. But I was looking at the tone wood video, tone polish video today and noticed a comment about, you know, how companies run the prices of things up and relic to guitars and how they charge more. And I think that's insane, man. When I buy something, I want it to be, buy something new, I want it to be perfect and spotless and I try to keep it that way. None of my guitars are pristine. None of them. They're all players' instrument. They they've all been on gigs. They all have been beaten up and nicked around and knocked around. Uh, probably the prettiest one I got, the prettiest two would be my Les Paul, which doesn't have too much wear on it because it's not that old, and the 2012 SG, which has very little playing time on it at all. So hopefully there's no big dings on that thing, but. I'm going to show you one that the relicking on this guitar literally cost thousands of dollars. Okay. Here it is. This is my 1980 Gretsch BST guitar with two DiMarzio Super Distortion humbuckers. Now, I don't know if you can see any of this. Uh... This guitar, I played this in the early 80s as my my primary guitar because it was about 300 bucks where, you know, Les Paul was way, way more than that at the time, or an SG. And the music store in town happened to have this. But here's, uh, and this was also back in my early 20s when I really dug putting stickers on things. Everything from my cars and trucks to my guitars. Uh, surprising I don't have any tattoos, huh? There's, if you can see here, is where the finish bubbled off being leaned against too close to some stage lights. Up here, right here, there's a bunch of nicking and scratches. Here is where it got whacked against a brick wall. You know, back in the day, there were times I didn't even own a guitar stand. If you can see that, I don't know. I'll review this video. If it doesn't come out, I won't post it. I'll do something else. The lighting in here isn't that good. The back, the finish is almost missing. Almost. There are nicks all, all over the side, around the edges of the guitar. This thing looks like down here. It looks like somebody literally pelted it with a BB gun or something. I don't know how half that stuff happened. There's one nick down there that sure looks like a burn. I don't know how that could have happened. Uh, 
the headstock is nicked up pretty good. We got here. Yeah, that's just some crud from hanging up on the hanger. The the back of the neck, the finish is starting to wear off from playing. And on this side, there's a big chunk of the rosewood missing right here where it whacked against the cymbal one time. Uh, there's a hole in the pit guard right above the switch right here where I had installed a, a coil split on the pickup. Not a coil split. Yeah, I think it was a coil split. And that wasn't original. And when I started working on the guitar again, I, I, I removed it. Uh, solid mahogany guitar. Let's see. Hear that tone? That's the sound of a knuckle against wood. Uh... The frets. Now, what happened with this guitar? I stopped playing it because the frets were dented so badly that it just fretted out. Uh, down here in the cowboy chords was absolutely just flipping shot. And I figured, you know, it needed refretted. And on something else that a lot of guys don't like this, but I kind of do, and I don't even know why, but I've never had a problem with that zero fret. That never caused an issue with me because the guitar holds tune really well uh i i thought it had to be refretted and then as i got older and learned more about guitar work and guitar repair i learned how to dress frets after i had dressed the frets on two or three kind of junky guitars you know harmonies and stuff from the music store and some some uh Oh, they were called AXL guitars that were just crappy guitars. Harmony guitars, harmony guitars I did practice my first couple fret jobs on. And one day I got ambitious and I took this thing apart and took the neck off of it and dressed the frets and crowned them and polished them and lo and behold... Guitar's 40 years old almost, uh, 35 years old. I'm playing through a little PV Blazer with the clean channel cranked up pretty good there. My nephew says I use too much reverb. I don't think so. But that's the bridge pickup. position. issues with it my the drummer that I have right now that is recently come back to me 
uh, 30 years ago, I played a PV T60. It was the first brand new guitar I ever bought. I still got it. 1979. And he was used to that guitar. And I bought this thing. And he just, for some reason, man, Freddie always hated it. He just hated it. So since Fred's been back in the band, I haven't really pulled it out. But one of these days, I'll surprise him. But hey, and uh, one more thing on this troll alert that guys are looking at. Keep up with it. Some of these guys got these weird Google accounts that are just like blank profiles. And I haven't even figured out really... I know how to block them on YouTube, but I don't know how to block them on Google. I'll have to find that out. If somebody could do a video and show us how to block out those Google accounts, yeah, we'll just we'll eliminate them one by one that way. All right, I got a gig. I got two gigs today. I got to go play a car show from 5 to 8, and my... I'm supposed to be 7 to 10 at Geneva on the Lake on the Strip, but my nephew and my other friend who's a drummer, Paul, that does a lot of my open mics with me, and my brother are going to kick it off at the lake. And at 8 o'clock, we're just going to tear down real quick and jump in the car and drive down to the Strip. It's about 10 minutes away. And David will already have everything set up, so all i got to do is just pull out my guitar and take the stage if I need to. I know I'll be the one collecting the money, but... That being said, we got, got some gigs to do today, and we got to play tomorrow, and we got to play twice Saturday, and we got to play Sunday. So probably Monday would be the next time I'd get have to make a video. But I just wanted to show that guitar, you know. That's relicking. That relicking costs thousands of dollars, or made thousands of dollars, okay? So every one of those nicks was earned. Okay, folks. Out with the old, in with the new. Until next time, catch you later.